Uh, today, I want to uh, pick up from where I left off last time when I was talking about heaven's invasion of earth. I want to explore another key concept in that theme that I hope will inspire us in this mandated mission uh, to bring heaven to earth. Before we go there, though, I want to summarize some of the things we said last time, just to give us some grounding and context. And last time we said that one of the ways we can activate heaven's invasion of earth is to find a tribe and join. The benefits of joining a tribe whose purpose is to bring heaven to earth are many. We'll mention three here. But they support God-ordained passions, giftings, and assignments that God has placed on our lives. And without a tribe to support us, we will not fulfill our mission, destiny, and purpose because interwoven within our assignment for heaven to invade earth is to be dependent on God and interdependent on other people. And those are the people that are journeying with us toward the same goals and destination. And uh, tribes help us build capacity, skills, and relationships to pursue greater challenges that are beyond the tribe. You can't be used by God to bring heaven to earth without being willing to risk. Uh, John Wimber, founder of the Vineyard, said, you, uh, you, def you spell faith, R-I-S-K. And he was right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tribes build faith and capacity in us by helping us to take risks in a safe and supportive setting. So, it's important to be part of a tribe when you're bringing heaven to earth. Now, I'm going to build on what I said previously by talking about a, another key idea, which I hope will help activate heaven's invasion of earth for us. And that idea is that as Christians, we are representatives of heaven. And as such, we owe the world an encounter with heaven. That's what Jesus modeled for us when he said, I only do the things I see the Father doing, and I only say the things that I hear the Father saying. Everything Jesus manifested on earth in terms of wisdom and supernatural demonstrations of power had its origins in the atmosphere of heaven. And we are called to follow his example in that regard. Now, that's a bold and definitive statement, but I hope it makes sense to you that as we experience heaven invading earth in our lives through um, salvation, healing, breakthroughs, miracles, signs and wonders, and impartations of the Father's heart, that we are compelled and even obligated to bring those experiences to a lost and hurting world. Jesus said, freely you have received, now freely give, according to Matthew 10. We'll share more on that idea of, you know, imparting heaven to people momentarily. But I just want to review the rationale for why this idea of heaven invading earth is important. Because it's important to know why we believe what we believe. Um... From a personal point of view, the concept <clears throat> of heaven invading earth is something I'm very passionate about. It's also a key value that governs and guides KCF. And that's one of the reasons why Don and I came back to this community. Uh, it's revolutionized our life and corrected some misconceptions that I've had about the Christian life. Um, for example, for many years, I made the foundational assumption that the chief aim of Christianity was to accept Jesus as my savior so that I can be forgiven of my sins and punch my ticket for heaven when I die. And there's truth to that. Um, you know, deciding to accept Jesus as our savior is the most important decision we'll ever make in life. And our eternal destination is of extreme importance. 
However, this understanding of Jesus' mandated mission is far too narrow and far too limited. It doesn't tell the whole story. Professor, Al excuse me, Professor Allen Street of Criswell College says that salvation is much bigger than any individual. It's about God reclaiming his kingdom on earth. And the good news is that we can be a part of it because the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's according to Luke 19.10. This verse is referring to everything that was lost when Adam and Eve listened to the voice of Satan rather than to the voice of God in the Garden of Eden. As a result of that sin, we as human beings forfeited our right and responsibility to rule and reign over the planet. However, the good news is, is that Jesus, through the cross and resurrection, defeated the devil, liberated the earth, and is now in the process of restoring his kingdom on earth. And he has invited us to participate in that process by appropriating the victory that Jesus won at the cross to every place that he has given us dominion, favor, and influence. In other words, after having received the kingdom of God for ourselves, we owe the world an encounter with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in every sphere of society. But here's the problem. While many of us spend our whole Christian lives preoccupied with how to escape earth to get to heaven, Jesus' life and ministry was preoccupied with the desire to bring heaven to earth. We know this because often when Jesus performed a miracle, he would say the kingdom of heaven has come near you or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This implies that the kingdom of God began with Jesus' ministry and now extends right into eternity. And of course, the most famous prayer that Jesus prayed was, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 9. So I think it must be acknowledged that as much as Jesus came to save us from sin, he also came to inaugurate a kingdom that began when Jesus came to earth and continues to this day right on into eternity. Pardon me. And we get to be part of the advancement of this kingdom by appropriating the victory that Jesus won at the cross to every situation where Satan has held our planet, and its people captive. So the main idea I want to emphasize today is we owe a lost world an encounter with heaven. The way I've heard it expressed is our destination is heaven, but our assignment is to bring heaven to earth. By implication, this means that we are ambassadors of heaven and we owe the world an encounter with the atmosphere of heaven by dispelling darkness and bringing light wherever god gives us favor and influence and this idea was really brought home to me one time when i was part of the tacf school of ministry now called catch the fire and uh one time we were doing a conference and as was typical at the end of a service, people would go for prayer along the prayer lines at the back. And uh, when receiving prayer, what would happen is that uh, people would fall onto the floor under the influence of the Holy Spirit and do what was known as carpet time. A person would lie on the carpet and continue to receive whatever it is that God was doing in their life at that particular moment, whether it was a healing or a restoration or affirmation of the Father's heart. And it wouldn't be uncommon at the end of a conference to see a bunch of people laid out on the floor in this fashion, 
receiving from God. And it was in this context that I, as a student of the school, was on the prayer team. And my job was to go around uh, and pray for people as they soaked in the Lord's presence. And there was one lady who was soaking in the spirit, as we called it. And as I passed her by, the Lord said to me, I want you to go and pray for her. So I went back to where she was. And I was anticipating that the Lord would give me either a prayer or a prophetic word or a word of knowledge. But when I went to speak, instead of words coming out of my mouth, I bleated like a lamb. And she began to chuckle. And the chuckle turned into a laugh. And the laugh turned into a roar of laughter. Until she was holding her sides and rolling on the floor. And every time I opened my mouth, this bleating lamb sound would come out. And it just took her into higher and higher levels of laughter. You don't really know how to end an interaction like that. I think after bleeding a few times, I just walked away thinking, what was that all about? And a feeling of embarrassment a little bit. But when I walked away, my speech turned back to normal English and life went on. And I believe it was a day later that I crossed paths with this lady again, and I really didn't know what to say. Uh, I think I started by apologizing and telling her I didn't know what happened, but I don't normally pray that way. Uh, I can't bleat like a lamb in the natural. And she said to me, surprisingly, I know what happened and don't apologize. It was wonderful. And she went on to explain that she had come to the conference feeling really depressed and she didn't know what to do. And that was fairly common in those days. People would come to the conferences as a last resort. <clears throat> Excuse me. She had tried other things, and she came to the conference in hopes of receiving a breakthrough. And when she was doing carpet time, and I had come over to pray for her, she said, when you bleated like a lamb, the Lord released joy and the dep the depression began to lift and what i find exciting about a story like that is it's just one example of many where the atmosphere of heaven came down and brought transformation to a situation on earth romans 14 17 says for the kingdom of god is not a matter of eating and drinking but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The woman testified that the Lord released joy, which in turn dispelled depression. And the question is, what happened there? Well, I believe that two kingdoms collided, the kingdom of darkness represented by the depression and the kingdom of light represent, represented by joy and heaven emerged victorious. The joy that comes from heaven is not a hallmark card based on nostalgia or good feelings or happy circumstances. Joy is an actual substance in the kingdom of God that is tangible and real, according to Romans 14. It also is a byproduct or an activity of the Holy Spirit, according to Galatians 5. The joy of the Lord is literally our strength, not the kind of thing that we can work up and produce ourselves, but something that is supernaturally provided by God as a supernaturally provided by God as a benefit of Christ's finished work on the cross. So what was happening in that seemingly bizarre manifestation? is that by faith, the lady and I were accessing the resources of heaven, in this case, the substance of joy, to transform a situation on earth, prolonged depression. 
in a display that demonstrated the kingdom of heaven's superiority over the kingdom of darkness. In that moment, Jesus' prayer, let it be on earth as it is in heaven, was literally being fulfilled. Now, one question you might have is, why did I bleat like a lamb? Why didn't I just say depression be gone? Um, the answer is, I don't know. But here's what I do know. The assumption that we often make when God moves in power is that he would never do anything to negatively impact our dignity or reputation. The reason why we believe this is because we are obsessed with self-preservation. But God wants us to die to self, according to Galatians 2.20. And he's very creative in his methods to produce humility in our lives. Humility is a major key to receiving breakthrough and honor. That's my best explanation so far for the bleating lamb manifestation. But bringing heaven to earth doesn't have to be as dramatic as that. I recall one time more recently being in a doctor's office and the receptionist was having a very difficult day. She had gotten into some kind of argument with the with a patient who was, and she was just fuming. And I could tell when I walked in by her body language and tone of voice that she was really upset. And I don't remember why I did it, but I think I yelled over some plexiglass into her office space. I'm praying peace over you or peace be with you, something of that nature. And as I was being treated by the medical professional I came to see, the receptionist went from her desk and walked into the treatment room. And she said, Terry, I think I'm going to come and stand by you because it's way too intense out there, but it's very calm in here. And she proceeded to stand beside me while I received treatment. No, I hasten to add that the kind of medical treatment that I required didn't require privacy. So it was fine that she stood there. That would be really awkward if it wasn't the case. But the question is, what was happening in that doctor's office? What was happening in that manifestation of a lamp? And I think the answer lies in what Jesus taught about the spiritual realm in Matthew 12, 28. Because when heaven invades earth, it produces a clash of two kingdoms. One of darkness, the other of light, or one of good, the other of evil. And a fundamental law of the spiritual realm is that the lesser power must give way to the greater power. So when it comes to power encounters, Jesus always has the victory as his power is greater than anything, anything in the demonic realm. So what I did in the doctor's office was call upon the Prince of Peace to bring the substance of peace from the kingdom realm into this realm. The result was that chaos and turmoil were lifted and the lady felt better. She didn't know what I'd done. She just felt the benefits of it and you know you can do the same thing there's nothing special about me all you must be thoroughly convinced of is that heaven wants to invade earth and that as ambassadors of heaven we owe the world an encounter with god's kingdom realm and that god is willing to work through you to destroy the works of the devil and advance God's kingdom. If you're willing to listen and obey 
the voice of the Father. So in summary, what we can say is we need to join a community of people that supports the kingdom purposes for our lives. And that helps us build capacity to fulfill the mission that God has put on our hearts. And this could be referred to as a tribe. Secondly, to the degree that heaven has invaded earth in our lives, we owe the world an encounter with the atmosphere of heaven, an, a an atmosphere that breaks chains and demonstrates the compassion of the Father. And as ambassadors of heaven, God wants to work through you to destroy the works of the devil and advance God's kingdom as you hear and obey his voice. Now, what I have said today is not all that can be said about heaven invading earth. It's a, only an appetizer of a much greater feast to come. But hopefully, it does a little bit more to equip us for the greater things that God is going to do. Now, before I uh, stop, I always pray for a word uh, that God would, would give me. And I had a picture earlier this week of a dripping faucet. And I believe that there's someone perhaps in the congregation today who uh, it looks like they were trying to turn the knob on a faucet, but no matter how hard they tried, there was no water pressure. And this could represent people that are trying to get breakthrough and momentum in areas of finances, uh, family relationships, employment, health issues, or breakthrough in your relationship with the Lord. And I think God wants you to know that he's working to change the infrastructure in your pipeline and create the mechanisms needed to increase the water pressure in your pipeline. So get ready for increase, get ready for breakthrough, get ready for living water of the Holy Spirit to saturate those dry, parched places of your life that desperately need to be soaked in the grace and the love of God. God has heard your cry for help and help is on the way. Begin to give praise and thanks even before the breakthrough occurs.